Hello YouTube. So somebody on my Discord server posted a link to this uh, necessary being survey, uh, which uh, I answered, but then I thought, why not make a YouTube video of this? Uh, for one thing, it gives me the opportunity to try out this new thing I can do, which is put my face right on the screen. You should be able to see my face right now if this has worked uh, if this has worked as I've expected. Um, so how cool is that? Uh, I can now just plaster my face right across all of my videos. Uh, don't worry, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm not going to be that self-indulgent. Um, but, you know, this is a, a, a cool little trick. So, um, you know, this is something I, I can use in the future and um, just trying it out now. But, okay then, um, this uh, necessary being survey is going to ask me a series of very basic questions and then uh, it will analyse them to see if any of them imply that there exists a necessary being. A necessary being is anything that necessarily exists and that can cause something else to exist or occur. So um, let's get started. Oh yeah, actually, before we get started, there are some uh, clarifications and instructions, definitions of key terms highlighted in blue. Um, it elaborates on the notion of necessary being. So necessary being, it is possible that it's a cause of something. It's not possible at any time that it does not exist. Um, uh, yeah, terms can and possible will be used interchangeably to consistently mean does not contradict anything that is necessary. Some answers will be automatically tracked. Um, I I don't know what that are they going to sell my answers to Cambridge Analytica? Uh, I what what does that mean? Um, okay, anyway, uh, let's get going. So, is there a necessary being? Well. Since I'm an anti-realist about both modality and causality, I suppose I should say that uh, it seems uh, not to be the case that there's a necessary being. Can anything be entirely inside of itself? Well, uh, I don't really know uh, know what what it what we're defining inside of. Uh, as being here. So I, I feel like this is really just going to rest on how we want to define the notion of inside of. Um, but uh, I mean, my my initial reaction to that is, yeah, OK, uh, why not? Uh, why why shouldn't you have something that's inside of itself? I also immediately like I just kind of go to thinking of, of like just, you know, weird objects in like weird geometries um, you know, like if you, especially if you have like a non-Euclidean geometry or something, then yeah, I mean, something being inside of itself that maybe gets a bit more intuitive. So I'm going to say it seems so. Um, can there be a contingent thing that has no cause? Uh, sure. Um, so, so I should say, I mean, first of all, uh, I, I am just a global anti-realist about, uh, I think I'm pretty much a global anti-realist about about all modal notions just generally, um, but also about causality. Um, but, you know, even putting that aside, it's never struck me as being remotely problematic to suppose that there might be something that just pops into existence without a cause, whether it be, you know, a universe just popping into existence or, you know, a particle, uh, it, you know, like it just happens for no reason. I don't. I've never seen what the problem is with that. Um, so, I, can there be a contingent thing that has no cause? I'm going to say it seems so. Um, can a possible event be uncausable, impossible to cause? Um, yeah. Okay. Well, let's say uh, let's say that I. I'm going to say it seems it seems so because. I suppose the sort of, I mean, again, the kind of view that I have is a sort of uh, um, a, 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 a pretty sort of, I, I'm very much on the anti-realist side about causality. And I think, um, yeah, the, I, I mean, I don't know if we're saying it's, it's impossible to cause, impossible to cause, you know, is causality something that I would take to be possible? Um... Uh, I, I'm inclined to say I'm, I'm inclined to say that I'm I'm just not sure uh, about that. So um, 
Well, my, my inclination is, is to say that uh, a possible event... Can a possible event be uncausable, impossible to cause? Um, so the way that I'm thinking about this is, uh, you know, I just take it that there is no causality. And I find it quite difficult to imagine how there could be causality. Um, and so I, I suppose I should say it seems so. I, I just take it that, like that nothing is actually caused by anything. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, with that in mind, but, but then, like, you know, if you want to start playing around with uh, possible worlds and all of that sort of stuff, and I, I suspect that the person who has created this particular quiz is the kind of person who likes to play around with possible worlds, well, in that case, I, I tend to think, you know, when you, when you let yourself have the whole space of all of the possible worlds and you're just being completely unconstrained with that. Um, as far as I'm concerned, at that point, you're basically just, you know, writing fiction. And of course, I can write a fiction where uh, there are causes, you know. Um, in fact, that's a fiction that I uh, use very promiscuously. I use it all the time. Um, so, it, you know, that, that, that's, kind of the, that's kind of the tension that I'm feeling here. Like, what I'm trying to do when I'm answering these questions is like, I'm trying to report my, uh, my like actual, my actual commitments, right, and not the sort of stuff that I'll say uh, or that I take to have some sort of pragmatic utility or whatever. So, I I guess uh, I have to say, yeah, it it seems that I I think that I'm just going to say that there are there is no causality period, and um, so of course events can be uncausable. Um, is it possible that there is anything that has a cause? Well, given what I've just said, I, I'm going to say it seems not to be the case. The, the reason why I'm, uh, you know, the reason why I'm not just kind of coming down and saying, like, yeah, there is nothing that has a cause is, um, you know, this is phrased in terms of possibility. But, you know, I'm not just... Uh, part, part, part of the reason why I'm generally sceptical of causality, that is something that is a product of a more, uh, a broader scepticism of modal notions in general. Um, so when we start talking about possibility, impossibility, necessity, uh, you know, that, that raise, you know, I, I'm suspicious, right, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, that raises my suspicions just as much as causality does. Um, but, uh, Okay, uh, does anything have a cause? Um, no, let's say no. Right, uh, a limiting property is one that entails a deficiency of some kind, such as a lack of power. Okay. Is the property of being a powerful, necessary being limiting? Uh, yeah, that seems, uh, that seems limiting to me. So the uh, limiting property is one that entails a deficiency of some kind, such as a lack of power. Um, yeah, I mean, being a necessary being, uh, that, I, I, I would have thought that's limiting. Um, for one thing, a necessary being presumably can't make itself not necessary, right? Like, it can't stop being necessary. Uh, it can't, uh, it, it can't, it can't, like, cease to exist. Um, but ceasing to exist, like, I can cease to exist. Imagine not being able to cease to exist. Uh, that... Like that, that sucks. Like I can, I can do stuff that this necessary being can't do. Um, I can make myself cease to exist. Um, so y yeah, I, I, I would guess. Although I don't know actually, would a necessary being be unable to see, be, be unable to cease to exist? Yeah, I, I guess this is maybe going to depend on the. Um, no, no, it, it, it would be unable to cease to exist because I suppose if. It can cease to exist. Then, uh, you know, if it can cease to exist, then it's not going to be necessary. It's not a necessary being because a necessary being must exist, come what may. Um, so yeah, if it's a necessary being, then it is limited. It is limited to existence. Um, imagine being stuck in existence forever. Uh, you know, there was a time when I would have thought that was absolutely wonderful, but you know, um, now I look at that and I just think. Are you, are, you, are you kidding me? I mean, you can't even make yourself not exist? What the hell? Like, I'm not even sure that I exist right now. Um, but uh, certainly I'm going to stop existing at some point in the future. So, 
uh, looks like I've got one over on that necessary being in that particular respect. Um, so uh, is the property of being a necessary being limiting? Uh, yes. Um, it's also funny that like a limiting property is one that entails a deficiency of some kind, such as a lack of power. So I guess there could be other kinds of deficiencies as 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 well. Like I I would say that it's uh, like may, maybe it's a deficiency um, that this thing uh, is sort of causing uh, causing things causing things to exist. Um, that's how the necessary being was. Uh, was defined right like it has to go around using causal powers like what like what is that that doesn't even make any sense it has to go around doing doing ridiculous things like that i can get loads of stuff done without using any causal powers because there is no causality so you know this necessary being um it really sucks so um let's say it seems that being a necessary being is indeed limiting okay so <clears throat> Some properties cannot have instances. For, in, for example, there cannot be instances of being a square circle. It's an interesting example, that one, because if you, uh, if you define a square as a shape that has four sides and that has fourfold rotational symmetry, um, and then you have a non-Euclidean geometry, you actually kind of can, well, you actually can get uh, square circles um, again, in in uh, like in non-Euclidean geometries, um, with that definition of square. But I would submit that that definition of square is uh, perfectly adequate. So um, I'm uh, I'm happy with square circles. I think uh, maybe there can be instances of them. Um, okay. So, uh, but let's put that aside. So there cannot be instances of square circles. Uh, okay. So such properties trivially entail every property because statements of the form if something has p, then it has q, are vacuously true if nothing has p. Fair enough. Let's say that a property p non-trivially entails a property q if p entails q independently of whether p can or cannot have instances. In other words, p entails q, but not merely because p cannot have instances. For example, being a square circle may seem to non-trivially entail having shape. By contrast, being a square circle does not seem to non-trivially entail being an octopus. For if there were square circles, plausibly none would be an octopus. Yeah, okay, well, that, that seems uh, fair enough. That's just a definition of those terms. So let's move on and see what the next question is. Suppose being concrete entails P. Does being concrete and necessary entail... Does being concrete and necessary non-trivially entail being concrete and so also P? Um, yeah, my inclination is is to say no and the reason for that is so i um okay uh i'm i'm a uh, I, i'm inclined towards some sort of uh some sort of instrumentalist account of uh of logic i think and i think i would say that the right sort of log so so we have a whole bunch of different logical systems right there's there's just a whole like massive variety of uh, logical systems available and I mean clearly uh, if you were to uh, s sort of extract the form of these statements using certain uh, logical systems then um, you would it would be the case that uh, the propositions here well actually so this is one thing right is that um, we're talking about entailments of properties so we're saying let's say that a property p non-trivial entails a property q so these are entailment relations between properties now usually when i think of entailment relations um i just naturally think of that in terms of propositions like i think of logical relations between propositions i don't think of uh at least it's to me it's a it, it i i guess i would see it as slightly metaphorical to say that like a property entails another property um, I, I don't know, maybe that's just maybe that's just me, but I tend to think of entailment specifically as like logical uh, relationships. So yeah, one one thing that concerns me here is okay, right, if we have this if we have a property of being concrete and necessary, right, does that entail some other property? And I just I don't I mean I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know why it would. Um, 
I don't know, I don't know why it would, because uh, the property of being concrete and necessary, well, uh, yeah, I mean, I, again, I am very suspicious of uh, modal notions. Um, uh, I'm not really sure what happens when something becomes both concrete and necessary. And so, yeah. Um, anyway, the, the more important point is a um, whole bunch of logical systems. Uh, and I think that the right kind of logical system that we use is one that is kind of lice. So the right kind of logical system that we use in any particular context when we're engaging in any particular inquiry is going to be licensed by our like background knowledge of the facts about that domain of inquiry. Um, so, you know, if we're dealing with modality, then we have a whole bunch of different modal logics on offer. And I would say, yeah, the modal logic that we use is one that's going to be licensed by um, background facts about uh, the particular domain, um, whether those be <coughs> facts about. Um, so, you know, it, it might be that it's going to depend on, you know, the particular sort of context, the particular questions people are asking. It might depend on, you know, our knowledge of the uh, particular physical structures or whatever. But um, I, I don't think that there are that there is like one true logic. Um, I think the logic we use is licensed by these kind of th th these kind of background considerations. So um, the trouble is that when we're just talking about like necessity and possibility, just completely abstractly, like completely divorced from any specific context. Um, I just don't, I, I, I mean, that it's just like there, there is nothing. I don't think there is anything to use um, to, you know, license the application of any particular logic. Um, so that was a little bit of a ramble, but um, hopefully that communicates something of why I'm inclined to say uh, actually no. Um, that, yeah, being concrete and so just being concrete and necessary does not non-trivially entail being concrete uh, so I'm going to say no. Uh, okay, as a rule of thumb, do contingent things generally have a cause? Well, uh, I've already revealed my cards on that one, haven't I? So it seems not. Interesting. None of your reports seem to imply that there is a necessary being, not considering your report on whether or not there is a necessary being. Well, that's that then. Uh, yeah. See, see you in the next video. <laughs>